Hello, good evening everyone. We are going to begin with our reading comprehension lesson. Reading comprehension is something that is very intense. So I'll be conducting it at a greater pace than I conducted my other classes like my vocabulary class because this is intended to simulate an exam environment. Although while discussing, I'll try to be as gradual as possible. So hope you uh, enjoy the session. Let's begin right away. So before us, we have, so this is a passage first to do is to try to estimate you do not need to and in fact you cannot most in all probability ascertain the exact uh, source of the passage but what is important is that you identify a faint idea of the passage right that is something that is very crucial that is crucial to understanding the passage so i'll just uh, zoom out so you can see the passage perfectly and then we can begin okay so let me just zoom out a bit and reorient it just a second yeah i guess I guess now it will be perfect. Perfect. So now, uh, this passage is somewhat talking about, uh, I think it's talking about uh, the discovery of America, pre Columbian discovery of America before Columbus, the theory that the hypothesis that Vikings, a uh, Viking called uh, Eric the Red or maybe Leif Erikson discovered America. But I won't use any knowledge that I have uh, previously. Uh, for answering the questions, but I'll certainly use uh, my basic idea in order to get a, you know, uh, my basic knowledge in order to get a uh, general idea of the passage, right? Around the year 1000, Leif Erikson. So as you read, you uh, imp you plant markers, right? You plant markers all through the text. You, it is very vital. You, as you are reading. So in the exam, you have a sense of pressing urgency. So you read fast, you read fast, but you place through the text, right? Every uh, few words or uh, maybe every sentence, every few, uh, uh, few sentences rather you place certain flags right and they help you guide you through the passage right uh, if we have a treasure or reverse obstacle course or if we have a map trail we put these flags there to guide us right checkpoints these checkpoints will enable you to quickly come back to the passage after you have found a question so all the way, go ahead picking up cues, go ahead picking up cues throughout the passage and go and very fast, you have to do all this very fast parallel processing, but don't be intimidated by it. It's not at all daunting. When you're moving through the passage, just go through the passage, uh, find the certain words that you think questions can likely be asked from this vital point. Uh, try to find points of inflection. That is where the tone of the passage reverses, like words like but, yet, right? Or, or certain phrases like... Uh, uh, but there is a contradiction or that uh, uh, this is where it all changes. Such phrases uh, are important. They show you that questions, you can fall for those traps. So there is some trick, there is some uh, something involved, some change of tone, sudden alteration involved that can lead to misunderstanding. So uh, you can mark all those points as important. And when you come back, these tags will help you quickly navigate to all those checkpoints. Just like you save your progress in a game so that you can start a game from your favorite task uh, similarly uh, treat it as an open world game where you are saving you are creating save files right slots that will help you so let us just quickly scroll through this passage around the year 1000 i got my timeline in my head i forget the year 1000 leaf erickson set sail from greenland and landed first in stone slab land i noticed the single inverted comma is there so there's something important i have to take it uh, very carefully i, I could, cannot reinterpret it because it's in single inverted comma there is no scope of reinterpretation except the uh, meaning that it's given in the pa passage itself then forest land and finally in Vinland. So I think the names of these lands, there will be a question on this. I'm predicting this. I'm prophesizing this. Uh, where Ericsson and his men found fields of wild wheat growing there and vines and among the trees there were maples. So I think this will also be important. This description that is there uh, quoted or verbatim from some historical source about the Vikings. So this is from a document. It's a quotation. It's an excerpt. So that is something that will be very important, prove important to us later on. So while reading the passage for a first time, even without seeing the question, my mind is quickly trying to process what questions might come. And all that I'm doing, not wasting any time. I'm doing it very quickly. We did land. The sagas provide important clues. Vinland enjoyed more hours of daylight than Greenland. In the depth of winter, the sun was allowed by mid-morning and still visible at mid-afternoon. Now, I don't need all these details. Sir. Where was the sun during afternoon? Where exactly was the sun during morning? I What the crucial point that is being conveyed is, remember that uh, for the CAT exam, you need very uh, general ideas that are obvious are obvious, right? You do not need to focus on them. Uh, if a question comes, you can answer them since they are so obvious. Very high level of detail is not necessary unless, an question, unless a question specifically demands so. So, un, uh, so it's useless to prepare for them beforehand, right? 
Anwa is a bad investment. So moderate level of detail. So what is the general idea here? Uh, a general idea that is also uh, like fairly specific yet general idea. The uh, idea that I did not know already, but that I learned from the passage. So what is that idea is that even in winter, this place, uh, unlike uh, Eric Leif Erikson's, perhaps unlike uh, Leif Erikson's homeland of Greenland, he observed that this place, unlike his home, uh, it enjoyed sun even in the depth of winter. There was sun for a fair amount of duration, like relatively high duration, although less in absolute sense, it was relatively high. So that is, I don't need afternoon and everything, right? Information that places Vinland between New Jersey and Gulf of St. Lawrence. I simply ignore all this. New Jersey, Gulf of St. Lawrence, unnecessary wastage of my working memory during the three-hour CAT exam, right? So I, I just put it out. So it is Helge Ingstad. I don't need his name unless it's invoked in a question. And then also I'll remember. So I don't remember. I, I'll recall. I don't need to remember his name directly. Store it in my memory. And archaeologist Anne Stein Ingstad, his wife. They set out, this couple set out to find these places, hoping the descriptions in the sagas might lead them to Norse sites, uh, including forest land which was flat and wooded with white sandy beaches. Where, so I see there is a description of this land. So maybe this couple are tracing out a description, reading the sagas of the Vikings and trying to find a description in the travelogue that fits this description here. Right. That's what I'm trying to do. And the land sloped gently down the sea. So, and the land slope gently down the sea. So, uh, Mark, my sense of urgency is there to simulate the real cat environment. I'm not uh, trying to go fast uh, because, you know, I'm trying to uh, not help you understand. I'm trying to do fast. So, I'm telling you what should go on your mind when you're actually attempting the exam because the clock is constantly ticking. You're under pressure. Three sections to solve. Cat gives you uh, three hours generally. This time, it's even lesser. So, you know, this urgency. So, I'm just trying to convey with my fast speaking how my mind is working. My mind is working faster than my mouth. So, uh, even that is not a fair representation. Anyways, uh, I find that there is a description that fit the Labrador Coast perfectly. Again, Labrador Coast, very specific detail. I don't need it. I just got by combining these specific details without remembering any one of them that all three details lie in Canada. So we are talking about Canada. Continuing to sail in southerly direction, the Instats reached Newfoundland. Again, a Canadian place. I don't need all these names. I know that, okay, these uh, history archaeologists couple, uh, for their research, they are journeying in the same place, trying to replicate how the Vikings traveled. Uh, or how, where the Vikings traveled rather. When they arrived at the village of El Andos on the northern tip of the island. So it's a complicated French name. I'm neither going to pronounce it, uh, attempt to pronounce it, nor going to remember it. Uh, they asked the locals about possible Viking remains. So basically this couple arrived at a village and they asked the current villages that, okay, is, do you remember there was a Viking remain here? Can you make a... So the villagers pointed them out to some grassy moons, like some raised areas of land covered in grass and said that, okay, we think, believe, say that we think these are the uh, places where vikings used to live but no longer nobody lives here no longer so they think these are the abandoned dwellings of native people they so they are saying that uh, they thought that these were the land of native people like american vikings but now they will find, maybe they will find that it was not native indians the native americans or what we call red indians or american indians but it was actually of uh, Vikings, maybe of the structures turned out to be collapsed remains of eight sword buildings originally held by wooden frames. So, mentally, I find that I don't need all this. This is extra detail that likely a question will not be asked with. Right, so, I just remove it. Okay, I remove it. Digging at the site for seven summers from 1961 to 68. What interests me is that they dug for seven years from 61 to 68. Why did they only dig in summer? So, something there is very interesting. So it has concluded that it was indeed a Viking settlement. The excavators found evidence of iron working, a work shed with an anvil and a last one, iron fragments and slag. I do not need all this detail. I just want iron working. So I just remove it. Right. So see how I'm shortening the passage. I'm shortening the passage. The working of gold, copper and arsenic occurred elsewhere in America. They are saying that other metals were processed in America, but iron was not processed. Now, because iron was not processed, I know that iron would have come from somewhere else, possibly the Viking, because iron was not processed in America. We don't have any history of iron processing in America back then. Other metals we have, but iron must have come from outside. So uh, quite possibly the Norse brought it. So I remember this, so I remove this. I, I this is a detail. Okay, I get it. but. Uh, uh, I don't need it. Okay. In the year 1000, nobody else processed. So, uh, okay. Now, I don't need all this. I don't need all this. Okay. Uh, this all is not required a lot. Irrelevant details. Okay. No, not irrelevant details, sorry, but not major details. Okay. So now uh, there are, so there is, whenever there is a change of level of evidence, right? So throughout the paragraph, you find a progression in level of evidence. Initially, it was a higher suspicion, right? That, okay, Vikings might have arrived. 
some evidence for it. After they found evidence, now they have a theory. So hypothesis turns into theory, right? Hypothesis turns into theory after argumentation. And after evidence, it turns into a fact. It turns into a truth. So by the end of the passage, we are pretty confident that Vikings would have arrived in America. So you have to note this progression. This will come of use later. Now, I have made certain predictions about the questions. Now, I don't know what questions will come. So let us see what questions come. So uh, while I was reading the passage, I did not prepare the passage for the class. And I did that intentionally. I had the time. I did not prepare. The reason was so I can simulate uh, you. I, you are seeing the passage for the first time. So am I. Your instructor is also seeing the passage for the first time. So I can tell you what goes on in my mind in real time. How do I solve passages quickly? Okay, how many landings did Leif Erikson make? Very easy question. I want you to solve it. Very it's pretty obvious, right? He set sail from Greenland. He set sail from Greenland. So this is not a landing. This is where he started from. He started from his home, the island of Greenland. This is his home base. Started from Greenland, landed first in Stone Slab Land. So he, these are all inverted commas. And there is no scope of doubt, no confusion spared because it uses then and finally. So there are three different places. I know that the same place is not called stone slab land. It can also be possible that the same place is being referred to by different names, maybe by different people or the same person at different times. But it's not the case here. He landed first in stone slab land. Very clearly it says first in stone slab land, then forest land, and finally in Willland. So I say that these three places and after Willland, there is nowhere that it goes because now it goes on to the journey of Ingstads and it talks about Winland, it talks about uh, forest land, but there is no new place mentioned. So it cannot be four. It is limited. So my answer is A, three. Simple. Any doubts you can ask. Okay. Which of the following can be inferred from the introductory paragraph of the passage? So see, this is the speed that you have to go. My objective is to teach you, but my objective is also to simulate how you might think. So if at any point you have any doubt, you can ask me. You can ask me to stop. But I think pace is not something that is hindering you a lot. If I can express myself clearly, I think you can process it, right? Yeah, but still, if you have any processing problems, just let me know. Which of the following can be inferred from the introductory paragraph of the passage? I read the question quickly, but I don't miss the fact that there is inferred here, right? There is inferred. It's not, it's not saying what is stated in the passage. So I can use some creativity. Again, I cannot use any extra information, but I can use some deductive logic, not creativity. I can use some logic, combine two things and derive a logical conclusion according to the standard rules of logic, right? So which of the following can be inferred from the introductory paragraph of the passage? The standard rules of logic is something very simple. It's like if all apples are red, then some apples are red. These are just basic rules of logic. The more formal, the more sim the simpler it is. Something is formal means it's simpler. It doesn't have any ambiguity. So understand that. Uh, Viking explorers tended to name places they discovered after its superficial attributes, color, vegetation, or overall appearance. Now what I see, they right that if you know, uh, there's some extra knowledge just telling you to explain the context. Don't use it. So, uh, okay, okay uh, so uh, Greenland and Iceland were named by Vikings, right? That's their home homeland. So Greenland might be a place that is very green. Iceland might be a place. See, although that uh, there is a twist there. I'll come back to it. Landed first in stone land. So you might think that according to the when Eric, uh, Leif Erikson is going there, he uh, he's, okay, he's traveling on a ship, right? He's traveling on a ship along the North American coast. And now he's, uh, the coast is long and uh, vast coast and at every few uh, 50 or few hundred kilometers, the nature of the terrain changes, the sights and scenes change. So maybe he decided I land here, random place I land here, this looks good. And then he found, okay, there are big giant flat uh, stone cuboids, giant stone slabs lying everywhere. So, so many stone slabs. So I don't have a creative name for it. I'll just name it stone slab land because there are a lot of stone slabs here. Then he goes back to his ship. Okay, nothing to see here. Not, no, not very interesting place. No people here. He goes back to his ship, travels another 100 kilometers, say another 500 kilometers on the ship. He's sailing along the coast and then again makes a landing on the coast. Comes back and may land on the land and lands. And then he sees, oh, this place is very green. It has a lot of forests. So let me name it forest land. And he does that. Finally, he uh, moves again. He comes across a, his last destination. Okay, this is my final landing. I'm not doing it anymore. And say, so, okay, a lot of vines are growing there. Vines, you understand all that creepers and climbers like grapes, grapes. See a lot of vines here, V-I-N-E-S. V so a lot of vines here. So I say, okay, this is called Vinland. I'll name it after vines. Now, this is something that you might think from the passage. But does the passage say anyway that Vinland was named after vines? Stone slab land was named after stone slabs that were found there. Forest land was there after forest. Although it says that in forest land there were forests, but it doesn't say that it was named after it. And stone slab land, it doesn't say anything about it. 
right <laughs> right will then it doesn't say that there were a lot of vines growing there even if it would have said it if it doesn't say they are named after it you cannot uh, you cannot assume it right so a is wrong the, these options will tempt you now these options are there to set traps for you each option is a typical trap a typical mistake that every cat aspirant makes and that which i want you to avoid so every option is there to confuse you to trap you to tempt you to entrance you but you have to escape it you have to dodge its tempt and you have to be very clear with your logic be very clear and distangle all the clutter and find the one right answer that is there right very clear any doubts you can ask okay next option let us try to find if this option in a very tempting and very clever option agriculture was definitely taking place in vinland when erickson arrived there first okay seems right at first glance why because he found field weed growing there right so fields what are fields crop fields right fields of crop 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 fields so some farming was taking place obviously but first of all it's wild wheat right and just digressing from the topic a bit from my own knowledge uh if you have studied some you would know uh there are two kinds of wheat wild wheat and domestic wheat the wheat that we eat right the wheat that we eat uh in chapatis rotis or breads that is triticum astivum it's a hexaploid wheat and that's a very different breed that's a breed created by humans human all the food crops that we grow all the animals that we grow in farms farm chicken farm cows horses bred horses these are bred by us we have introduced inadvertently or directly some genetic nowadays directly earlier through hybriding uh, through breeding and hybridization we have introduced genetic changes in them and made them dependent on humans they are different from their wild species so much so that now it's not just a different subspecies it's gradually turning into a different species that speciation that uh, divergence is happening in the evolutionary process so uh, even if you don't know all this it's wild wheat right so fields of wild wheat it's not saying that that wheat was uh, planted by someone wheat grows naturally right it's not that uh, god gave us wheat out of the sky wheat also was a natural crop that was over time domesticated by us in fact wheat might predate uh, human civilization wheat might predate uh, wild wheat might wild horses were there we started to tame them and use them wild cows were there before we started to breed them so that they produce more milk than they would for their children so that we can uh, uh, you know milk them every day so these wild things were already growing there this this wild wheat was growing there naturally it's nowhere written that agriculture is happening so either by using common sense or by referring to the passage or by using your biology knowledge any of the three best is refer to the passage it doesn't say agriculture was taking place it doesn't comment on agriculture what i told you was just to explain it to you better to justify it from a from a factual perspective but you do not need it be wrong not mentioned in the passage simple leif erikson was a viking explorer i know that is true i have told you it is true but this passage maybe from the article where it is taken it's written this passage doesn't tell you that leif erikson was a viking explorer why now you might be confused this says viking this says viking right so how can i say that leif erikson was not viking right nor we uh, so uh, any anyway, Uh, norwegian uh, the, the archaeologist himself is norwegian again you cannot say that uh, and uh, someone from another country cannot have interest in the same right you cannot just cannot say that and you cannot say that uh, okay north sites so certainly north sites is got to be a viking but look first of all can be inferred from the introductory paragraph of the passage you tend to miss that term in the question a lot of you answer uh, c but it's not correct it's not correct right why because leif erikson was a viking explorer that you know i know a lot of people know from gk from history from geography you've heard it somewhere maybe read it in some kind of literature the introductory para of the passage is the first para the opening para the maiden para doesn't say anything about it right doesn't say anything it's just uh, it's just a long sentence there's nothing no mention that leif erikson was a viking he set sail from greenland but can the only people living in greenland be vikings are you sure no right and uh, it's not something that is a universal logic it's not a universal truth so definitely c is uh, sorry c is definitely wrong right now d coming to d vinland has uh, more than one kind of vegetation so just time we have to process it very quickly so vinland had a lot of vegetation so okay they found fields of wild wheat growing there so i'll just mark it here okay i'll mark it very quickly i'll mark one wild wheat growing there and what else we had vines okay or what else um, among the trees we had trees also 
right so we had a certain kind of weed or crop or what we say food grain plant wild food grain plant growing we had vines that are those creeper climber things we had these giant uh, lo- tall uh, woody trees growing there among one of one example was maple so you see we don't only have three kinds of plants or three kinds of uh, you know three different species of a uh, plant we have three kinds of vegetation three different categories of vegetation uh, we had uh, food grain plants we had vines and we had trees right three different kinds of plants so perfect answer we had obviously because we had three so d is the correct answer here clear then let's move on to the next question which of the following sources from the sagas are used by the author in the passage to deduce and roughly estimate the location of viking sites remember it's the author who is deducing and roughly estimating the location you are not using it right the author is using it so which of the following sources from the sagas what are the sagas is there in the passage sagas are vikings writing down their stories of their uh, from their travel logs right sagas are basically stories that tell of viking voyages like great viking voyagers who traveled in the sea so these are just sagas are just a series of stories that tell a historical narrative so they are not uh, uh, fictional 100% fictional they not might be 100% real they are definitely not fictional either uh, so choose all that apply again don't miss this choose all that apply it's it's a multi correct question it's not a single correct question always read the question never skip if two questions start coming similar you get in the mindset okay i'll skip 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 never do that okay very clear uh, vegetation type so vegetation type did they use vegetation type to roughly estimate the location of viking sites now you tell me one thing from your common sense now you have answered vegetation type tell me one thing sagas sagas were written hundreds of years ago hai na like maybe 800 years ago 1000 years ago this was set in 1000 ad maybe the sagas were written a few hundred years later but still a lot uh, old do you th- more importantly sagas whenever they were written they wrote what erickson told so erickson told about how it looked 1000 years ago so sagas even if they were written much later the information was about uh, the description of the north american coast according to erickson that how it looked so he says about vegetation what does he say that all those wheat and map maple trees and vines were growing there do you think something growing there in 1000 ad as erickson would have seen it would have survived now when a uh, thousand years later in the modern era in uh, the 20th late 20th century or early 21st century when this uh, ingstad couple the historians the archaeologists the researchers are going there thousand uh, thousand years later do you think the vegetation would have remained even if humans would have not changed it and uh, the vegetation would have gone do you think the same a place you go after uh, 50 years you can't guarantee that the same tree will be standing there maybe it will but the entire vegetation no way thousand years unlikely also even if you don't use that logic vegetation type is not used just refer to the passage vegetation type they don't use vegetation type what they use uh, the author uses see this account he quotes from the saga that's why it's in single inverted comma he quotes from a historical document what he quotes in depth of winter the sun was aloft so he says that okay now i go to that place and i find that when in mid what is that place in north america where in the depth of winter in november december or january the sun is aloft high by mid morning and even by mid afternoon when other cold places in north uh, get a sunset here the sun is still shining at mid afternoon so it might seem weird but think about it they are talking about do you know norway is called the land of the midnight sun so for leif erikson it was weird that the sun is still visible at 3 uh, am uh, 3 pm sorry sun is still visible at 3 pm and 4 pm for us it's normal that sun is visible at 2 pm like it's really hot at 2 pm but they live near the north pole so they have like this giant days giant nights these all cycles because they live near the poles so you must have read that in geography right poles have this extreme long days and nights that days are like summer uh, nights are like winters right so you get that right so uh, basically this is the information information it's written here information that places winland so this information helps us uh, find where the vikings would have landed this winland would be somewhere here so they see okay this is still visible at mid afternoon so they see okay the sun doesn't change right earth doesn't uh, geographically uh, geologically or astronomically cosmologically 1000 uh, years is a very small time vegetation can change the plants and animals there growing there everything can change thriving there can change but uh, the planet cycles do not change in 1000 years unless there is a catastrophic event in which case most likely we will be severely affected even wiped out 
so my point is if 1000 years ago the sun was here at this time of the year at this time of the day it was here it will still be almost here only so that enables us to place very accurately and that is what the passage is saying they did not use this information they quoted it from the sagas but they didn't use it to find that whether uh, the winland would be near newfoundland or whether it would be near uh, labrador island they didn't use it now they are using what information are they using they are using descriptions in the sagas and they are looking for geographical descriptions like uh, white sandy beaches land sloped gently down to the sea see they are not talking about specific plant species they are just saying this area is forested so overall a forest is to be there you cannot say that this plant is there in the forest this plant is there most of the trees are of this type that can change but if a area is forested most likely it will still be uh, for some forest would be there more importantly beaches and rocks and flat the nature of the land if it is sloping the slope doesn't change over 1000 years unless there is severe man made activity there mining and all so if it is flat 1000 years later also it will be flat land gently slope down the sea and this is not just what i am saying they use this information it's written the couple are using this information and right? that is there so see use terrain and relief they use sightings of the sun's position corresponding to various times of the day most important information very specific very useful directly mentioned in the sagas metallurgy metallurgy is not used to roughly estimate the location of viking sites first of all it should not be metallurgy it should be uh, finding of iron and okay they use the knowledge that uh, uh, north american native north americans didn't have the knowledge of metallurgy of iron but still uh, they use it to confirm something right to ascertain a precise location see uh, i know that vikings uh, if the theory says folklore goes that vikings came somewhere near north america i cannot end up digging all of north america to uh, search okay is there a viking artifact here no is there a iron piece here i cannot dig up north america first i use a pre preliminary elimination test or, or a selection test and i select okay this small 50 kilometer area they would be somewhere here eli ferriksen would have landed somewhere here so i use uh, terrain and relief like white sandy beaches and everything now a beach can be uh, several kilometers long and flat land so okay this stretch of uh, 50 kilometer land is flat after this there are hills so this is where ericsson would have landed and i cite the sun okay so the sun's position is accurately here so sun's position varies with a distance so i know okay it can only be in this 20 kilometer stretch it's very sensitive measurement so i dig now i can dig right if i ascertain it to some one or two kilometers i can dig randomly and if i dig 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 my area is small my area of search is small search region is small i dig and i find okay there is some iron here so i say okay there is some iron here iron was not uh, american native cultures did not know how to make iron uh, in 1000 AD, well until a much later period so iron must have come from outside where outside it would likely have come from the vikings because they knew how to make iron and europe is close by just on the west coast uh, northwest uh, there is europe uh, just on the west canada parallel so that is there so metallurgy is not correct because it's not used to roughly estimate the location they read the question very carefully b and c are correct any doubts ask a and d are wrong a is absolutely wrong d is also wrong b and c <coughs> sorry pardon me what could be a uh, possible reason for the odd choice of seven summers see i predicted this and the question has it what could be so it's, it's doubt right it's a doubt if you're digging for seven years you're an archaeologist why would you waste the rest of the year on only digging summers like that is something that makes me curious indeed right genuinely curious why so, what is the possible reason for the odd choice of seven summers as mentioned in the opening lines of the last para so the extreme climate of the site owing to its far north location uh this can be possible see uh see canada greenland all these are located in the north right and in the north you have this northern altitude northern latitude sorry northern latitude uh so you know it's near the north pole so this place is pretty cold right so it would certainly be difficult see uh what happens archaeology involves digging as you have seen there they dug for iron now uh if i try to dig in the winters these areas canada and everything that are far north where the sun sets in uh late afternoon or uh, before uh, much before the early evening what happens uh, in winters in summers it's okay with slightly south it's okay but uh, uh, even in the relatively southern regions of the of the far north the relatively southern regions of the far north there is a thick layer of snow and ice right in the winters that thick snow settles on the ground and when the thick snow settles on the ground what happens it's very difficult to dig it's very difficult to dig obviously right because you cannot you have to dig the snow first then you have to dig the earth and then uh, all the buildings and all are also covered in snow uh, some shallow structures might be sunk in snow some might be covered on the roof 
not certainly there the extreme climate of the site makes sense they only dug in summers because in summers the snow wasn't there and the weather was also more hospitable they could survive now the, if the archaeologist himself is suffering from a, a frostbite or a, a hypothermia due to the cold he they cannot dig comfortably they have to wear all that uh, protection from the cold and this makes it very difficult to uh, work freely so a makes a lot of sense to me uh, b the lack of detailed information on the site that's fine. It might be lack of detailed information on the site because few people live there. Uh, there is not a lot of information. But then we use all these tools, sun's position, terrain and relief metallurgy. Even if you don't agree that sagas provide enough information and you say information is not detailed, okay, accept it. But then why only in summers? Is it that it is a seasonal thing? Is it that in uh, winters uh, you have less information, in summer you have more information? No. Yeah, nonsensical. B is wrong. The year-long unavailability of manpower near the site. The fact is correct. Year-long unavailable. Absolutely correct. Like it's a cold Canadian island far in the north eastern sea. Like I, uh, it's an island coastal area, and uh, it's very cold there. Uh, few fishermen villages would be there. Like the villages they interacted with. Very few people to help you with the digging. But do you really need a lot of people to help you dig? Like uh, archaeologists can do that pretty much. They have their teams. And even if you need people, even if that is true, it's year long. This option itself destroys itself. It's called year long. Why would it only affect summer if the unavailability is year long? Had it been winter unavailability, it may, would have made sense. It doesn't make sense. You think for yourself. What could be a possible reason? So unlike other questions, it encourages you to think. Use some of your previous knowledge. Some again, remember. The presence of grass in copious amounts on the side. Fine, but if there is grass on the site, first of all, grass is not very big deal uh, in digging, right? Uh, if you have to dig manually. And even if there is grass, then uh, the summer and winter thing is there, right? So there is more grass, in fact, uh, in summer, right? In summer, there is more grass. So grass will obviously not help you or something. So if, if grass is a deterrent, then grass is there more in summer. It so doesn't make sense that you uh, use it the way you see, right? So what is the summary of the passage? So, Leif Erikson was the first European to discover the Americas. The Viking sagas are not a reliable account of Erikson's voyage to America. So, you get it. This answer is A. 4 is A. Okay. Now, a summary of the past. Summary is typically what a lot of people find difficult. So, uh, understand a summary, you've got to internalize the passage, really assimilate it, absorb and then distill it. You know, uh, uh, get the distillate and uh, the summary has certain qualities. The summary needs to be concise, yet it needs to be complete. So you have that tantalizing balance. You have to not make it very long. But you have to also make it com complete. It should not leave anything important out. It should be. It should give equal treatment to all aspects. It should be well rounded, right? What is the possible summary of the passage? Now you have all read the passage. I will just take you back again for a quick glance if you need. Very passage. I have shortened it by removing the extra information further. So now I hope it will be much better, easier for you, right? So, right. And I'll just remove some more uh, stuff, right? So just removing this stuff. Risky exercise, it's fine. Now that I don't think this all are very important. So, okay, now, uh, but not that much here. So, uh, it's relative. What is the possible summary of the passage? Leif Erikson was the first European to discover the Americas. He might be, that might be the uh, purpose of the article, but it's not the purpose of the passage. The passage given to me, accepted from some article that I do not know anything about. This doesn't talk about Columbus, doesn't talk about uh, that whether he was the first. It is not there in the passage, simply. How can something not there in the passage be its summary? Summary is the essence of the passage, most important part of the passage. How is something that is not mentioned in the passage at all be its summary? You understand that? Makes sense to you. Makes sense, right? Uh, the So, you have to do all this very fast. That's why I'm going very fast. So, I'm simulating a real CAD experience. You cannot wait and think, okay, is it written? I check. You have to remember, there. I, when I read the passage for the first time, there was no uh, mention of being the first European. That was not the point of contention. The point of passage was whether Leif Erikson visited America. Whether he was the first European to visit, not mentioned in the passage. Right. Pointless. A is gone. Eliminated. The Viking sagas are not a reliable account of Erikson's voyage to the Americas. So Erikson's voyage to the Americas, so first of all, it's factually wrong. Were repeatedly helpful. They told them the they told the Ingstad couple, the archaeologists, the position of the sun, with whose help they could find the area. They told about the vegetation type, right? Which was not again uh, something that is uh, uh, something that is uh, that proved to be very useful. But again, it's a detailed account. At least I know it contains information in detail. 
then uh, it told me about those flat sloping land white sandy beaches uh, flat land sloping beaches a uh, woody land and that all helped the ink starts to reach there sagas gave the ink starts a lot of information sagas are very detailed documents according to the passage not something that i am saying something the passage is saying so this is this is against the idea of the passage this is opposite this is contradictory to what the passage is saying it's against its content antagonistic to its content so something wrong simply put plainly put bluntly it's wrong b is wrong so b is also incorrect eliminate it now coming to c the role of the ink starts ink starts who the couple the archaeologist couple in framing our mod no you don't need to go back to the passage and check who the ink starts for do not waste time in the cat cat is fast it would be fast role of the ink starts in framing our modern knowledge and understanding of the history of the viking expedition to america is indispensable now factually correct unlike b this fact is factually correct ink starts were very important right ink starts were indeed very important uh, they might be but does the passage tell you that let me take you back to the passage to show you my point see some uh, good number of it uh, so in such specific detail being some now see the norwegian explorer helg ingstad and his wife the archaeologist ann stein ingstad set out to find it. and then the passage goes on to describe how did they find out what did they reason but it doesn't talk about their personal struggle it does their qualification what university they teach in how did they become archaeologists where did they study how did they decide that okay i want to be archaeologist what is the passion that motivates them that okay i am an archaeologist what is their personality persona emotions what is the interplay of a couple who are working as an archaeologist nothing not no personal element here only telling that okay there are a couple husband and wife both are archaeologists and they are working on this problem so see now a cat uh, summary is something see there there can be five important points right and you can say that each important point is equally uh, weighted okay so i'm not saying that uh, point is uh, important okay. summary summary point may be as just as important maybe just as important as the uh, indicated by its size just as important as the summary point right So, but what is the importance of summary is that unlike other points which may have more information or more bulk to them, maybe there is a bigger paragraph dedicated to instats. But that paragraph is not the central idea, and maybe there is only one line dedicated to what is the summary. But that every paragraph's big con big text, every single sentence of every other paragraph has a direction. Its intent, its purpose is to target that paragraph. So even if this paragraph. just one if the, even if this idea is just conveyed in one sentence it is the central idea and suppose ink starts are conveyed in five sentences those five sentences are just contributing to towards this idea they are helping this idea so uh, this summary is where all big, even bigger ideas bigger than the summary itself are converging are, are helping so every evidence when when we talk of the ink starts why do we talk about them because we have to prove that leif erikson came to america so leif erikson coming to america this five letter phrase leif erikson coming to america everything in the passage is uh, how long is sacrificing its identity to help this passage whatever other passages are other lines are doing other paras and sentences are doing they are not doing for themselves they are doing so that they can support this argument so all are standing beneath and they are uh, having this uh, passage uh, this summary lie above it right so you understand what is happening they are serving as pillars they they have lost their identity they did not talk uh, or their size means nothing to them for the sake of it their importance is to give importance to the idea that leif erikson because in the end what did we conclude with all this false suspected speculation hypothesis progression what did we conclude what is the ultimate conclusion or inference leif erikson discovered uh, leif uh, sorry leif erikson discovered uh, um, came to america right so uh, uh, i know this role of ingstads so ingstads are not important here what is important with a combination of archaeological excavation and sagas it can be reason that leif erikson landed somewhere in modern day canada is an ideal summary it might be long slightly long, not very long slightly long but it covers everything it doesn't leave anything important behind with a combination of archaeological excavation and sagas not saying we relied on sagas only no we didn't rely on this iron only we used both one to roughly estimate one to precisely pinpoint and prove it can be reasoned see how beautiful a language reasoned see it's talking logically it's not saying that we are pretty sure we are just blindly asserting oh this is a fact we are reasoning that leif erikson landed somewhere in modern day canada precisely correct because see it's not very general like right? landed in north america somewhere in modern day canada on the coast we are we are so the otherwise the bandage no purpose of the passage unless you are 
uh, the passage helps you okay we need some more specific if research helps you to go more specific more targeted so it's earlier research said north america now more research instance worked hard they found okay somewhere in canada but still not very specific not too general ideal summary op optimal neither too general nor too specific so the answer is d right clear any doubts you can ask clear no okay okay so that's the end of the class so i hope you enjoyed the class uh, you can leave now Thank you so much for your participation. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. You can drop a feedback and you can leave. Thank you. Thank you so much.